You're watching Community Manifesto live on TV3 New Day. We're still in the northern region of Ghana. Today we're coming to you live from the Sanarugu constituency, which was created sometime in 2012. Now, this constituency is considered largely an NDC stronghold. The member of parliament is Alhaji uh, Inusa, ABA Fuseni, I beg your pardon, ABA Fuseni, and he was recently, um, if you like, removed and replaced um, as parliamentary candidate for the constituency by Honorable Ataisa. Now, this constituency has a steadily growing voter population of over 82,000. So, uh, over 82,000 registered voters. It is a big constituency and it plays a very major or key role in the politics of the region. And so it is one very important constituency. So we're happy to be able to come here live to engage with the people here to speak about the issues on the ground and also understand the considerations that they will make in deciding who to be their member of parliament going into the elections on December 7th. Now we've been here for a while. We've engaged with some people on the ground. They have spoken about some of the things that matter to them, but that's not for us to say right now. Right now, we will activate the microphones like we always do and allow the people themselves to come to the microphone and speak. On Community Manifesto, we say use your voice and we encourage you to use your voice to address our leaders directly if they are here. And today, some of us, some of them are here with us. Of course, we always put out the announcements on social media and also uh, to all the leaders of the community so they know that we are coming. So if they choose to come also to be able to directly respond to the the issues that are raised on the ground, um, we allow that. So today, we're joined here by the Honorable Parliamentary Candidate Aspirant uh, for the NDC, Honorable Ataisa, and his team. Good morning, sir. Fat, good afternoon. <laughs> good morning, sir. Good morning. It's great to have you. Um, can, can you introduce your team to us? Or who and who, who, and okay. who are here? But, but first, you can, you can formally introduce yourself. We can hear you. It's fine. Yes. Okay. So, good morning once again. And my name is Honorable Ataisa, the NDC Parliamentary Candidate for San Argo. And we are privileged to be in the company of the first MC for the, dist uh, the municipal okay. when it was created. Honorable Sorogodo was the first MC for the municipal in 2012. And we have our constituency secretary, NDC constituency secretary, Alaji Fusine Hamza, and then Mr. Seydou Dokurugu, the former constituency secretary. So we are those to represent the great NDC. All right. And um, so that's the only representation we have here. Yeah. Um, for Community Manifesto in this constituency. But like we always say, um, an invitation is thrown to all, all leaders, really, irrespective of their party colors. But our aim is to speak to the constituency or community members first. And then, if the leaders present can answer any of the questions or speak to any of the issues raised, they are able to do so on the show every day on Community Manifesto. So the microphones are activated now, and we encourage you, if you're, if you're standing behind the microphone, now is the time for you to step to the microphone and then speak on the issues that concern you in the constituency and the things that you are considering, the things that would um, encourage you to vote for one candidate or the other, or otherwise, whoever wins, what are the expectations you have of them when they become um, leaders of this constituency come December 7th? So, so we'll begin with, with uh, you on my left-hand side. Okay, good morning. Good morning, sir. And good morning to all your viewers across the country. In fact, I'm a concerned citizen of San Diego constituency. I'm not just a spectator, I'm a citizen. And I want to find out, for the past eight years, we have not seen any sort of reshaping of rules or opening up. The constituency is a fast developing one. And most of the communities in the constituency are still underdeveloping. So these are the kind of things that we will need. But unfortunately, for the past eight years, we haven't seen such. Also, because of the fast development nature of the constituency, we need extension of electricity to uh, new communities and also extension of water. But we haven't seen that for the past eight years. 
In fact, this would have been a very good question to the DC. But unfortunately, for MPP in Sanargo constituency, there is a saying in Dagbani that a man who dies in the market needs no funeral announcement. So unfortunately for them, MPP is dead. MPP is dead in Sanargo constituency. And you can see it. I'm sure an invitation was extended to them. But for shame, for in order for them not to be disgraced, that is why you can't find them here. Thank you. All right. So he's asking about road expansion projects. Anyone else from this side? Yes, sir. Um, my name is Umar Farouk Ibrahim. Actually, I am a member of the, the campaign team for NDC. Let me first of all start by commending TV3 for extending this uh, opportunity to us from San, in San Argo. Uh, it's not, I mean, it's a, a rare privilege, and we thank you so much for this. With you or uh, uh, media houses like you, the country would, I mean, be put to where it is supposed to be. I would want to also say that, as our first speaker said, those of us in, in San Argo, let us say there's no competition. I want to put this out to the doubting Thomases, who sits in their other constituencies and think the MPP can match us. It's, it's obvious. You have seen it yourself. There's nobody here to, I mean, talk for them. If they, they know what how they are handling the country is in, is in order, they should come and speak to, 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 for themselves. But if their parliamentary candidate was here, what I wanted to ask was, I wanted her to tell us, what has she been doing? If not for election years, you will never see her. She is using us like seedlings, I see. She will not come here until election year. For our candidates, it's obvious. I will say there's nothing to be, to be done. As Bahumia said, if I'm able to do something today, why would I be doing it the next, if I become the president? For Ataisa, it's obvious. Sincerely, recently I went to Damangu. When I introduced myself, I'm coming from Tamale. The first person they asked of Ataisa, that tells you the kind of personality the NDC is putting for San Arbu. All right. I want to conclude by saying that they should watch out for Ataisa. Sanargo is not his, 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 his end. He will triumph over Sanargo. And we are going to put, tell the MPP that if they know what they think they are doing can match or can, I mean, lead them to a, a successful election, they should come. I would have only also loved her to be here and I will ask her, there's a part of the constituency where around the Gurgu electoral area, where a part of it is, I mean, when it rains, the road, when it rains, it casts, I mean, pedestrians off. off. They can't cross. Which, she, part, which she, part of the road is that? Jusunaili. I mean, on the Jusunaili uh, enclave. She organized media in the name of, I mean, constructing that. I wanted her to tell us how, how, how did it end. Because the thing is still there, not done. So I want to say that, as for us in San Argo, there's no competition. And uh, come 2024, 7 December, we are going to prove it and prove it All well. Right. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Good evening to our listeners and our viewers. I have two questions for Madam Felicia, and I have one for the DC. And the first question for Madam Felicia is that I'm, I'm even shocked she's not here. Because if she claims she's doing what all what she has been saying, why is she not here? And my first question that goes to her is that she's the coordinator for school feeding in this northern region. And I want to find out from her whether she owes the whole Ghana or she owes the MPP party. Because I say this because this is what she has been. Anytime you have issues with her, it's either she goes to block your school feeding or they pay and you don't get your salary. And that is what I want to, and I am a testimony. I'm a victim to that. What happened to you exactly? What happened to me is that she has gone to block my school feeding and not only me, even the regional. When, when you say she has blocked your school feeding, what do you mean? Are you a student? No. 
We well, are doing school feeding program. Okay. That is the MPP um, this thing, program. What do you mean by your school feeding? My school feeding, because I'm also a beneficiary of school feeding program. As, I'm a caterer. That's a caterer. Yes, please. Okay. Which she has done. And the regional women's organizer for MPP, she has done the same to her. And there are a lot of people. We can't do you, mention Do you these. know for sure that she has done it? How do you yes, know please. that she did it? Yes, please. What? I know for sure she did it because how, how she know? has not hidden it from me. She has personally told me that if I don't come to apologize to her, she would not do anything about it. And which I want to throw this question to her or to all the MPP people who are or the, list, uh, the, um, the leaders who are listening. If they are truly listening, I want to know whether the party belongs to M uh, Felicia Tete or Ghana belongs to Felicia Tete. And the second question for me to go to Felicia Tete is that I want to know if she wanted to be a DC, the opportunity was given to her. I don't know why she's, an, like she's a parliamentary candidate, but she wants to pop her nose to it, into virtually everything that comes out from the district assembly. Everything, including the chairs, the district assembly are supposed to distribute to the people of Sanargu has been directed to be given to Felicia, to give it to the people in her name. That is what I don't understand. And this is what I say. These elections that we are going, no one, there's no deceit. We are, nobody's going to deceive anyone. And this is what I, I have to tell them that this is not about money. MPP claims they will use money to win this election. And this is what I have for them. If it is money, we have suffered for good eight years. Two moms will not kill us. So I'm entreating all Sanargu people to hold on to their faith. The Messiah is here, who is Honorable Ataisa, and His Excellency John Dramani Mahama. We are looking forward for them to come and rescue us. All and right. this question, the last question I have, goes to the DC. Wherever he is, they have refused to come, that they are in Bolga, wherever they are. This message goes to the DC. I want him to come or any platform he gets. I want him to tell us one good thing or two things that he has used the common fund to do. I last told them they are spending the common fund money and they took me to court because of that. And I have my reasons of accusing them that way. They cannot um, choose you as a DC within not even up to a year. You went and pushed your whole house down and you started building box house. No one is a kid here. There is nothing she has done. Why was she not building the box house? She was not building. So if I say, and secondly, I say so because the chairs they have sent to Felicia, Felicia doesn't work at the, um, was the distressed assembly. So why, what, what is the chairs doing in her house? So these are reasons why I keep accusing which, which them. Which chairs are you talking about? Chairs for what? School furniture. Furniture? Yes. For, for, for the district assembly, yes. And you, you are saying that the and chairs are in the house of the have been directed. When we followed up, they said the chairs are for Felicia. And the question is, if the chairs are for Felicia, what is it doing in the district assembly? Because it's not Felicia's father's house. So what is the chairs doing there? I see. So it is not an excuse right. for them to carry the chairs to Felicia house. For her to, if she has, she has done nothing. There is nothing Felicia can stand here and tell her she has done. That is why she can't come here. Okay. She has been our parliamentary candidate for MPP. This is her second time. Honorable Atesa, this is just his first time. That is why we wish you could have been here. And we'll compare the four years or the two months Honorable has spent here and her four years. Then we'll see who is who and who is ready to serve the people of Ghana. Thank you. All right. All right. Um, please, please go ahead. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. What's the mic? It's okay. Can we please fix this microphone for him, please? Oh, okay, okay. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, you are welcome. Thank you so much. Sweetheart, Nana Shoko. We always monitor you. Thank Good. you. My name is Courtney Tabu Jama, and I'm a residence uh, person in Sandra constituency. Okay. I live at uh, Kataraga Electoral Area. And these days, I saw a new road being constructed. And a new road being constructed at Dimala a new road at Swagna Ile, and there are a lot of issues going around claiming that Madam Felicia Tete is the one constructing the roads. And I don't know how it came. And Madam Felicia, who is not a member of parliament, nor a DCE, but just a mere PCE, 
to be constructing roads. So I wanted to direct the question to the MCE of Sanargu to know who or when did this contract was awarded. Is the MCE here? I don't think so. Okay. He has run away. And the next one is when did the, the, the contract awarded and where was the funding, the funding of the contract of this rose? So that is the major question we are asking of this contract issues. So I'm sending it clear to Madam Felicia and his own people that they should just come out boldly and tell us that where the rose is coming from. Or we should get a platform for him, uh, for her and our honorable man, the Biblikuti, the Sapashini, to, to make a debate to tell us how it came, the road contract. So thank you very much. All right. So I think we have one more from here. Four people have spoken. So one more from here and then five people from here will speak. And please, I encourage you, if you are recording this, we don't mind, but you can't go live with this, okay? So if you are live on Facebook, please stop it now. We don't mind if you record it, but we don't want you to be streaming live because we will show this tomorrow live on TV and we wouldn't want you to stream live now, okay? So you can hold on, you can post your videos after we have shown on TV. All right, thank you so much. I appreciate your cooperation. Please, um, my lady, please go ahead. Okay. I'm in Nakadija. Um, um, my question goes to the DC and also to Felicia Teta, uh, Tete. We were told she was given an invitation for this program and she's not here. Just like my sister said, as um, Ghana for Felicia or Sanargu for Felicia, if she's not here, why is the DC to not here? They are all not present. And I don't, the second one is, I don't understand why she'll be claiming um, government works, campaigning with it, that she is the one doing it. She needs to respond to us. All right. Thank you. All right, so we'll come here now. We'll take five comments from here, and then our, uh, our leaders would also speak. Um, yes, five. Thank you very much for the opportunity. My name is Mujib Santana. Um, I'm, I'm a resident of Sanaro constituency. Um, precisely, I stay at Jisona Ayile. I want to use this platform to tell everybody in Ghana that Sanaro constituency belongs to NDC. This constituency was created during the NDC regime. Sanaro had its first municipal assembly created by the NDC regime. Yes. The entire district office was built under the NDC. So if you hear people saying MPP is gaining grounds, MPP is gaining grounds in Sanargo, I think this is an opportunity for the whole world to see that there is no single MPP in Sanargo. In fact, the few people you see voting for MPP are some few NDC I mean, persons who one way or the other are dissatisfied with one or two issues. That is the only time you see them diverting a bit to vote for the MPP. But I can assure you, and I'm sure you can also testify, that there's no MPP in Sanaro constituency. Right, so, I mean, more to the, sub or, I mean, the substantive issue here is that I want to ask the MPP people, I'm sure they will be watching this live on TV, that they should point to Sanargo, the single classroom block they have built in this constituency. A single classroom block. We all know that education is the ladder to success. And I can dare them that they have not constructed a single classroom block. How then do they actually intend to, I mean, elevate their poverty and upgrade the lives of people in their constituency. So clearly, MPP is very dangerous party in this constituency. The only party the people of Sanargo constituency should rally or throw their support to is the great NDC. Honorable Ataisa, even before he became the parliamentary candidate for Sanargo constituency, was actually doing a lot of infrastructural development. I can go on and go on and go on in education, in health, in road infrastructure, even before he became the parliamentary candidate. He actually did a regraveling and reshaping of roads at the 
Kalesi um, Central um, Cemetery Road. He went to Wayamba, renovated an entire six-classroom block. The classroom block was, in fact, the, the, the whole thing was devoured for about six months. Nobody was there to help. He stepped in as an individual, a philanthropist, to help them renovate the entire school. Aside that, he was actually someone who helped to pay a lot of medical bills and school bills. So this is someone who even before ascending to the position of a parliamentary candidate was very instrumental, very productive, very proactive, and very development oriented. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so we feel that there's no contest in Sanarugu. If anybody feels that the person can contest, then it shouldn't be in Sanarugu, probably in a different constituency. Right. And I know that after this particular election, the one who has come for the second time, Madame Felicia Tete, will pack her bag and baggages off to um, where I don't even know where she's coming from. Thank All you right. very much for the opportunity. Um, well, because you asked me if I could attest to whether or not there are MPP members here, let me just share a few um, results from the past elections for, to, uh, for you. So in 2012, the NDC got 80.5% of the votes, and the MPP got 17.9%. In 2016, the NDC got 78.0%, and the NPP got 20.3%. And in 2020, the NDC came back to 80.52%, and then the NPP got 17.84%. So just to give you the actual figures of the voter distribution between the NDC and the NPP since this constituency was created. I so, clearly so agree I clearly agree with the statistics right. you have given all and right. personally I have them. But like I mentioned earlier, the people that we see them voting for NPP are originally NDC, NDC. people. Okay. Right. Who one way or the other are probably dissatisfied with one way or the other some issues that did, are did they you, feel did they are you not research? going on well. did you Yes, I'm them? actually telling you from the findings we did from our research. You so what you I'm did, telling you, you is a a find, exactly. We have conducted three researches. I see. Yes. O what kind of research was it? Was it qualitative or quantitative or? No, it's a scientific research which includes or? both qualitative and uh, I mean quantitative. All right. Yes, and you it's found a that those who research. vote for the NPP clearly, clearly, are former clearly. NDC. I can tell you for sure, and I'm very sure I about see. that. Maybe when Ataisa speaks, you let us know what he's doing about That's fine. the dissatisfied members. And for your but, information, but let's, let's most, of them have, uh, most of them have actually told us that they are back home. They were missing. They were lost. I see. They are back home. And I'm telling you, for 2024, the election results are some will of them reflect. Here? Yes, some of them. The okay. one who spoke some earlier, the one who okay. spoke earlier so, was so actually maybe they, they will come and then they also she was tell actually us. a women's organizer for MPP. The the, the lady, yes, the caterer. The, yes, the caterer. Oh, that I is see. how come she, that is how come she has the school feeding slot. Oh, that I is see. how come she has the school feeding slot uh, as oh, a caterer. Yes, so we are bringing all our people home and. It will be charitable to give Madam Madam Felicia even five percent of the votes in Sanarugu. I see. That would be very charitable. You want to give her five percent? I'm saying that for us being charitable, the maximum we can even give them is five percent. I see. Yeah. My lady, you used to be an MPP faithful. Is that is that correct? That's yes, what they are please. saying. Yes, please. And then you left to yes, support please. the NDC. Yes, please. Do you mind telling us why? Uh, I felt the MPP was being selfish or self-centered, let me put it that way. Because I felt we all are Ghanaians. We are in, entitled to whatever we vote and we expect development. But in Sanarwo constituency, a lot of things, or in Ghana in general, a lot of things went wrong, especially Sanarwo constituency. Because you can't go around and take the people's names in the name of giving them loans. You go to take the money and you come and squander the money or spend the money on your own. And when I'm voting, December 7th, I'll go and cast my vote. But I'm voting with the hope that things will be well for all of us. But if I vote and it's going to be an individual interest, or who will vote, Ghanaians will vote, and some few key people will be enjoying. Who won't do that. All right. Let's listen to someone else. So we'll take four, four more comments and then we'll come here. All right. Please help us with the microphone. Yes. All yes, right. All right. Um, Good morning. Good, good morning. My name is Abdul Mumin Fusini, um, former training secretary, Tamale Technical University. Okay. I'm a resident from San Diego constituency. 
precisely living at filling station, uh, I mean filling point. Um, sanitation is one of the important or one of the key areas as a constituent or I mean a nation we need to look at. But it's unfortunate the DCE for San Diego is not here. My question was going to be on sanitation. Um, from my enclave, within the filling point, um, it's always very difficult whenever our, I mean the mothers or our wives do the cleaning of our areas or their houses, where to always dump the refuse. It's always an issue. Um, so we were thinking that at least within that area, we can also have a place uh, where we can have the Zumi Lions container, where we can be dumping our rubbish. At the end of the day, the Zumi Lion would come and take it, go and, and empty it. that's filling point. Nice one. Okay. But then it's, un it's unfortunate we don't have that. Uh, but the one important or the happy part of this is that our current parliamentary candidate for NDC, Honorable Ataisa, I have seen him severally doing that within other areas. Shishegu is one, uh, Jisunaili or Gurugu is also where he has been helping cleaning or, I mean, clearing their refuse. So I'm extending my plea within our area so that uh, at the right time, either before the election or even giving him the nod to be the MP for Sanaro constituency, of which I know he will definitely be the MP. Isha Allah come December 7. General 5, they will swear them all in so that he would have a look at that case in our area. We can also have, all right. uh, I mean, a place all to right. come there. Thank you very much. All right. All right, so the weather is changing, and we, we want to be able to finish before it rains. So please, let's be fast, okay? So we have three more comments from here. Yes, madam, please come. Police <laughs> Wabuka <laughs> I call Lola come Thank you. So um, just to translate what she was saying, she says that um, this year she was hoping that Felicia would not show up at all and that she's wondering what the elephant has done for this constituency, that the elephant has not done anything for this constituency. But she's grateful for Honorable Ataisa because he has, among other things, paid their medical bills, whether it's 100 CDs, 200 CDs, 1,500 CDs. He always pays. And if it had not been for him, some of the roads would have been in very deplorable states, and among other things. So she's encouraging everybody to vote for him, um, just by way of translation of what she said. All right. Thank you okay. very much. Good <laughs> morning, <laughs> viewers. Yes, good morning. And thumbs up to TV3 for visiting Sanaro Constituency. You have come and then you have realized that, or you have seen it yourself, that it is only NDC. I am even shocked and surprised that if we have a full MC and they have invited him, he can't even say that he didn't see the videos 
the pictures of the invitation. He can't say that. Not even talk of the PC for the, that party. I can't even mention that party. But then, I'm just going to just summarize my uh, submission. I am Musa Kalam from uh, Katara Electoral Area. Sanero constituency is, consists of 53 communities and which my electoral area is six communities. Fortunate enough, we have our able former DC, Honorable Surogudu. When he was in office, together with the, um, our MP, who is uh, Honorable ABF Sene, we were able to put up 12 classrooms for Swarugu, Bakurugu, Yonduni, Katarga, and that's four communities. Within with these four communities, they were able to also build a health facility. With the additional classroom that I've just mentioned added to the previous ones, there has never been a single classroom added within these eight years of MPP government. And I wanted the MCE, Honorable Polo, and then our Honorable Felicia Tete to answer me this question. If NDC was in power and they were able to build six classroom uh, unit blocks for the, uh, my electoral area and a health facility, for the eight years, is electoral, uh, Katara Electoral Area not been paying taxes? That's my question. I wanted to pose to them. And I know definitely right. they are listening and they, they, they should attend to that. All thank right, you thank very you, much. Thank you, Mr. Musa. One more person and then we'll come here. One more. Nobody. All right. All right. Sorry. Yes, sir. Yeah, good morning. Good my morning. name is Abdel Momin, a resident of Sanaro Constituency. Okay. Uh, mine is just a report to you. Uh, uh, Honorable Ataisa. For me, as a resident of Sandal Constituency, I would say his 100 days in office as parliamentary candidate of the NDC is more beneficial to the people of Sandal Constituency than the eight years of the MPP in office. <laughs> and my reason is that uh, for about, uh, since he's assumed office as PC for uh, this, our beloved constituency, more than 15,000 people have been registered into the National Health Insurance Scheme. And also, uh, clinics have been constructed one is at uh, Gurugu. We also have one going on at Malishegu. And a lot of developmental projects are going on. So for me, the man sitting beside you is a man of wonders. He's doing a lot for this, our beloved constituency. And uh, we are very, very, very proud of him. We are assuring him of our fullest support on December 7, 2024. We are going to endorse him as our MP because what we know is that he is going and our push because we are uh, aiming of achieving at least 95% for him and Excellency John Dramani Mahama because they are development agents whom we believe that they can develop this our beloved constituency to catch up with other constituencies across the country. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, um, Honorable Ataisa, a lot has been said. Yes. So first of all, let me also thank management of TV3 for bringing governance to the doorsteps of our citizens and i think that you need to be commended for that effort and to also commiserate with uh, the people of saipiao nyerji sanarogozongo for and uh, kataraga there was a heavy downpour in tamale two days ago and so many of the residents there were affected but there is a prophetess among us she's called Hawa from Kalsi. when i was called that this a program like this. She told me that the MPP will not participate. A week ago, because I made a solemn pledge very soon, they will not be a candidate for Sanargo again for MPP. Very, very soon. Because we are confronted. Look, this is an accountability platform. NDC shouldn't even come and proffer solutions. You have been given a mandate for four years. You are coming to account for your stewardship. We are only here to confirm or deny. The people who claim they have worked are, are afraid of their own record. 
and the opposition is chasing them to, to discuss their record. But let me assure you, there are two legacies I will say for, first of all, Honorable Polo, who is the MC. Honorable Mariam, wherever you are, we miss you. She was disgraced and ousted because there was complaints that she wasn't working. But I can tell you, Honorable Polo will go down the history of this constituency as the worst performing MC in the history of San Arbo. Why do you say that? I have records here that I'll share with you. Composite budget for the assembly, 2023-2026. And I have another one I'll share with you, 2024-2027. In four years, through the disassembly common fund, there has not been one single completed project by the assembly. Even one. This is a legend. I think he will share his own light. But Honorable Mariam was even better. But you know the surprising thing? He has arrogated himself with a dubious distinction as the handback to the parliamentary candidate. Who is that? Polo. Because that's it, that's it. handback. What does that this, mean? You know women has... Yes, but what, what do you mean? What I mean is that Honorable Mariam was assertive leader. She wouldn't tolerate manipulations. So she went to cry to President Akufuado, and they ousted Honorable Mariam and brought the stooge and the darling boy to her, which is Honorable Polo. We know the role she played in 2020 for her. Ever since Polo came, if you see Felicia here, you see the MCE there. Even if it is in Gata, you see the tour. Look, what is wrong with that? No, I'm coming. There is a mandate for the district. If you look at the Local Governance Act 916, there is a mandate for crying out loud. Parliamentary candidate has no role in any local governance structure. You are not supposed to be following a parliamentary candidate who doesn't have any representation on the assembly. To the extent that, as of Felicia, her legacy is that she introduced sharing of electric bulbs and magic cubes for votes. It has never happened anywhere in Ghana. She will be credited for that. Sharing she, of electric, electric bulb, just this light bulbs, and what she's wearing, and, duku. and say, Duku, vote for me because of this Duku. She introduced it in Ghanaian politics in 2020. Right now, her second distinction that she has brought to Sanargo again is temperament. She doesn't have a good temperament for a leader, every secret and leaked document from MPP is through her. The good thing about her. You are making allegations. I will tell you, you remember, you were here when she threw a recording, told us how COVID funds were distributed. You didn't hear it. So the only good thing about her is that she will be an agent for us during the operation, recover all loot. We will use her as a star witness to account for the funds, how it was used, and we'll make sure that she will be a star witness to help us prosecute the MPP in the utilization of COVID funds. As for uh, Ataisa in the NDC, our legacy is supreme. It is one to none. The MPP, the only thing they could have come here to tell us would have been that we have shared money. We have shared 10,000 to this group. We have shared this to this group. But the people of Ghana, and particularly Sanargo, this high unemployment rate, people are suffering, the harsh economic conditions, Plunged by this country, uh, by the, uh, the incompetent Akufuado and Baumbek government, we are also having a pinch of it. Yes, but the, Our road the, networks. the NDC has had this constituency as a stronghold yes. since 2012. Yes. And since we've been here a few days, there are a few things that have come to our attention. So we've heard about issues of land grabbing and using or selling of government lands to private developers to build malls and shops and so on. Lands that could be used to build, for example, accommodation or residence for doctors and nurses in some areas. We're told about the prison service land, um, the prison service quarters, which has been collapsed and moved to about 100 kilometers away, and the land being used for private purposes and so on. That's not San uh, Yes. No, I'm telling you about things we've heard okay. since we came okay. into the northern region. All right. These are some accusations and allegations that have been made mm. on television. Now, in this constituency, what we've heard about this place are issues of sanitation. I think one of the gentlemen even spoke about it. Issues of public toilets, 
issues of some roads. I think somebody spoke about a road which has been cut off or is always cut off when there is rain or flooding. And then another road, is it Jinso? You know, I, I Jinso, couldn't, you live. Yeah, the, the road over there that needs to be yeah. fixed. I know that a member of parliament does not construct roads, but then members of parliament have the power to lobby for development to come into your constituency. Yeah. So can you tell me, I mean, you are now, you are incoming, but your party has had a hold of this constituency since 2012. Can you speak to some of the developments that you've been able to lobby to bring to this constituency? As a party? Yes, as a party for your people to keep you in office. In fact, let me just say that everything in San Argo was done by the NDC. If what you look is everything? At, if, you look at the, if you look at World Bank, the human development indicators, there are four principal criteria to measuring the success of any community. One is electricity, access to electricity. NDC is the political party that gives this constituency 100% access to electricity. Every single community in this constituency, they got electricity through an NDC government. Can you speak about water? Water. NDC also gave 100% access to water. What, what, what is the water situation in this constituency? Oh, it's pretty good. Do, do except you have water running through the pipes? Except around Nangbayokura, Changna, Yilbukpomo, Enclave. And the reason is that the pipe, the pipes, there is low pressure there. So right now, what we are even doing is to connect water from Kumbung, Kumbungu constituency through Sanga so that the people can also tap it. That it's not to say that there was no water. In our time, there was so much water, but now there's a rice processing plant here down there on the Nyangpala Road, Avnaj. So they use chunk of the water for their processing. So the ones that goes through the community is inadequate. So we are trying to source the, the water from Kumbungu constituency and use it through Sanga to the communities. Apart from that, every single community has access to water because of NDC. And even me, let's say one year parliamentary candidate, I have extended electricity in Suashi, I've done that in Yilona Ayile, I've done that in Kulmanga, I've done that in Shishao, some parts of Shishao. I've done connections of uh, tabs that were disconnected due to high bills. I've reconnected Zayure, I've done Katarga, I've done Dabashi, I've done uh, Kulinyavula, there are a lot. I can't even mention all. Okay. I, road networks. Yes. And then, then we'll come to sanitation. Yes. Road networks. As a parliamentary candidate, even though NDC did major of the roads here, I wanted to share with you a document. If you look at the Ghana Secondary School, uh, Cities Project, the new three roads that is currently ongoing in this constituency was signed on 25th September 2018. Even that time, Polo was not born as a DCE. And Felicia did not even consider becoming a PC. But yet, apart from these three rules, any other feeder road or urban road or third road that you see in this constituency is kind of courtesy the NDC. And in opposition for the last eight years, Honorable ABF Sene and myself have done open apps in many communities. Critical example was uh, the Palestine Cemetery Road. In fact, if you go to a community called Kulinyevla, it looks like a government awarded feeder road project and it is done by myself. Personally? Personally. Without the support of a DC. With which funds? With my personal funds and friends. You constructed? I would take, in fact, if you had time, I would have taken you people to. You constructed a road? Not that. Okay. But I'm saying that if you see it, it looks like a feeder road awarded by government. Is, is that on the screen? Is that it? This is Sakyao. This is Saipiao. It's also a new settling community. And I went to do open apps in that area. So you see this Saipiao. It's a new settlement. They did it. In fact, do you know the amazing thing? After this, uh, our uh, uh, former MC constructed the district assembly office. Even just to open up this road. Because the district assembly office is just behind the district assembly office is this community. The MC cannot even do roads in that community. In fact, recently... There was so much spillage on the road on San Kuko heading towards Spicy. If you follow that road, it will take you straight to the DCE house. Because of the dilapidated nature of the road and because of flooding, when the DCE wakes up to go to work, he rather passes through Spicy and go to his office. He doesn't use that road. It took the NDC party in opposition 
to go with an excavator to dredge the gutters there and to also provide gravel on that road to uh, enable pedestrians and riders and car drivers to have access to that road in this difficult period. And the MCE, after we did the road, do you know the surprising thing? Two days ago, they saw him with a Soko pickup on that lane. So he's using the road? He's using the road. I see. So, and if you come to sanitation, yes, yes. sanitation is good. I always say that... Uh, you don't have sanitation problems we, in this We do, of course. We do. And it is not peculiar to San Argo constituency. If you look at... We went to do collection of refuse in Jisonai, like he alluded to. We did the same thing in Guruguyapala. We did the same thing in Shishao. We did some in Parang. Is that it? Yes. This, I think this is Shishao. Or Jisonai. This is Jisonai. We cleared it and we even applied chemicals to make sure that it's habitable for residents around that place. But you know the shocking thing? The district assembly, through their composite programs, have budgeted close to 300,000 to ensure sanitation of the, where the dam sites are. But yet, not even one has been cleared since 2023. Not even one. What, why is that? Oh, but they would will, they will rather use that money to buy electric bulbs. Have you spoken to them about it? This assembly, somebody who doesn't even sit in the office, only always following the parliamentary. How can you locate such a person? No, no. On a more serious note. I'm being note. honest with you. On a more serious note, mm -hmm. what you have said is, you've made a very profound statement. I'm being honest with that you. That an amount of money was allocated for sanitation. Yes. And they have not used any of that money yes. for any sanitation yes. projects. Yes. And you have attempted to engage them, but they are not available to speak about it. In fact, it. when you see him, and you try to raise this issue, uh, he will say in Dagban, and don't you Angela, Angela. Oh, my friend, I don't want that, I don't want that, and he will go. Just jovial. But you see, this is a critical issue to our people. MPP did not come to govern this country to the satisfaction of citizens. They came for grabs. They are grabbing. They are not interested. Look, two days ago, yesterday, I was in one community close here, Sanargo uh, Zongo Fong. I think there were witnesses around here. When I went to the community, in the evening, the former metro, uh, Tamil Metro Mo, uh, Mayor, Honorable uh, Musa Superior, the house was, uh, the road there was like one dam, one village, one village, one dam stretch. I, I stepped onto the water and the muddy environment. Do you know what the, the residents told me? What did they tell They you? told me that in the morning, the MPP parliamentary candidate and the MCE, those who are in Bulga today, they told me yesterday, in the morning, they came, parked their cars on the other side of the road. That is a little bit better. And that road they parked themselves was done by myself again. I opened that place up. They parked the road there and decided to walk. When they got there, they saw that they, they could not have access to that place. It was unmotorable and they could not use it. They decided to stand there, calling the residents to come for electric bulb and 20 city. They stood there, saw the, that there is no access road. They stood there and were they calling come them. For electric electric bulbs, bulb, the eight cities, eight city electric bulb. For what? They just distribute. I think if you want, we can share pictures and those things with you. Electric your, bulb. Just a bulb. And twenty cities. Yes. In fact, something they tie And this was yesterday. Yesterday. They even look. Do you know sometimes they even tie Maggie cubes tray, and just share. And what was your issue with that? My issue with that is that. If you, mind, if you measure on minor issues like that, critical issues that confront the people, you overlook them. Okay. And that is how come we don't have access rules. Because they are prioritizing votes than development. Look, recently I went to Wayamba to spend 416,000 Ghana cities for the construction of a classroom, JSS block, for the people of Wayamba. When I and went this there, is from your personal funds. Yes, and friends. I, are you, how are you generating these funds? We have large base of people who believe in our vision. I came there. So you have donors? Yes. Who are giving you money for this project? A lot of donors. In fact, we are still encouraging more philanthropists to come. All right. Because let, let, we will use their money to develop. So let me land on the, the Wayamba thing. Okay. When the MPP went there to engage their first time voters and the women, you know what they, actually, they rather did? They gave 
5,000 Ghana cities and said that NDC accused us of giving you money. If they come, do they give you money? And the, the one lady said, oh, they, they are building a school for us. He said, but we will make sure that you go abroad and study, not Ghana again. That's the response that uh, Musa Supira gave them in Wayamba. So I'm saying that these people, the focus is not to improve education. The focus is not to improve health care. The focus is not to empower women. The focus is not to reduce unemployment. The focus is on electoral fortunes. And that is how come Galamsi is collapsing this country. All right, let's talk about youth unemployment, which is also one of the major issues confronting this com um, community. What plans do you have for the youth? Should you become the member of parliament for the constituency? So first of all, I will rely heavily on the overall vision of the NDC. We intend to create an export-led and import substitution economy through the 24-hour economy. So the jobs available under this package is that, one, we'll give stimulus packages for various small-scale business and then uh, big companies to expand their businesses and employ more people. The second thing is that there will be improved security, meaning that we have to increase more security uh, visibility. So Sanargo, to the people of Sanargo youth, Soldiers, immigration, fire service, and police recruitment is underway in the next 70 days' time. His Excellency John Raman Mahama will be the next president. Right. And apart from that, if you look at, we are coming to set up the National Women's Bank to make sure that we empower our mothers. Once we empower our mothers, they will be able to expand businesses and recruit okay. more people. Now, I appreciate that and you are me talking about... Okay. Me personally... I want to make sure that, first of all, we have to ensure that we prioritize agriculture, which is the main stay of our people. All right. We'll establish the distribution, we'll continue with the distribution of free medic, uh, fertilizer, seedlings, and all those things. Make sure that we have the farm service center that can encourage our people to farm and cultivate for them for free. All right. The youth, we intend to make sure that we'll set up an employment center as part of our overall objective to secure them permanent employment. We'll make sure that the employment sector will be like a referral center where we'll solicit information from our youth and their various uh, expertise and capabilities, and we'll search for the jobs for them. Okay. And all the projects that we have enumerated, we are building, will create employment for the youth. And I am telling them that the continuous stay of MPP in government it's a continuous denial of opportunities for them for the future. Uh, uh, about this specific constituency, um, correct me if I'm wrong, I visited a few communities in the constituency and I met some women producing shea butter. Now, they had a concern and their concern was that the continuous exporting of shea nuts and the shea fruits from Ghana to other parts of Africa and the world is creating an employment problem for the share butter producers. Because like in countries like Mali and countries like Burkina Faso, they do not export the share fruit itself or the share nut itself. They export share butter. So the producers of share butter in the country continue to be employed and they can produce more so they can export. But in Ghana, we are exporting the share nut itself. So depriving the producers of share butter the opportunity to continue to produce in large quantities and export the share butter. Do you have any plans for the women especially in your constituency? And in fact, I think it's a, it's a conversation that the entire northern region yes. has to have and nationally as well. For the export of share nuts and share butter okay. and share fruit yeah. to come to a, a stop. Fortunately, I did my national service with Ghana Cocoa Board under the share unit. The share unit was established by His Excellency John Draman in Mahama. And we're still doing stakeholder consultation in partnership with Kokoshi, the Cocoa Share Farmers Association. It's around the Stambik Heights, opposite Stambik Heights in Accra. Their objective is that President John Draman in Mahama, if you look at our agri policies, is to establish what we call Ghana Share Board. Ghana Share Board. The Ghana Share Board. Okay, what would the board do? The board will be like the way Cocoa Board is. We'll make sure that we'll create insurance policies for the uh, share farmers. And also make sure that we we'll provide export opportunities like Cocoa Board. There are buyers abroad who buys them. Then there's a processing plant in Ghana. We don't have it here. It's only private entities that do processing. Because of that, they don't have capacity enough to meet external demand. 
So government of Ghana creating a share, a, a share board will make sure that we prioritize setting up uh, share processing plants in Ghana. Like the way SECAF, you know, I don't know whether you've heard of SECAF. They, they do this uh, share butter and all those, uh, turn it to cosmetics. We also make sure that we prioritize uh, more establishment of more share processing plants and also make sure that we create a enabling environment for the women who pick the share net. Okay. Often that is also where the problem is. Okay. But I want you to speak to the export of share nuts and the share fruit. Because from what I gather from the women I engaged, that is the problem. Because a lot of them I spoke to said they've been doing this their whole lives. But because of the rate of export of share nuts now, the demand for share butter from Ghana has come down. Because we're exporting the share nuts and the share fruit. And so whoever buys it produces the share butter in whichever country that is exported to. So the demand from Ghana is low. And you spoke about the economy under the NDC being more export driven. export driven. So for us to be able to export more share butter, we need to be able to keep our share nuts and our share fruit here so we can produce to export. Now you have just answered the question. So Yes, so I, I want you to speak to that so that we know that you are committed no. to ensuring that this happens. You see, conversation like because, this. Because, uh, you know, because you mentioned that it will become like cocoa board, yes, I mean, share board. I, I know that this is a national issue, but since we are talking about it, let's just go there. Cocoa board does export cocoa. Yes. So if the share board will be like cocoa board, then the, the problem still persists. No. Because um, they are asking for the share fruit and the share nuts not to be exported. You see, the basic misconception people have. There is nothing wrong with export of raw share beans or share uh, cocoa beans. But it deprives. We look at. No, I'm coming. Okay. At least I've studied cocoa sector very well and share sector. I'm saying that there's nothing wrong with that. Normally, you need to study the demand of the local consumption. So if you are able to estimate the demand of share butter locally, and you have processing plant that can meet that demand, the rest of the business must be exported. So cocoa board, what they have often done, we have cocoa processing plants in Tema. So we will produce chocolate to satisfy the local market. Then the rest goes abroad. And that is how come until Akufuado came, Cocoa Board has been the, the backbone of every government in the history of Ghana. Because the priority is that it's a good export commodity. And uh, now, you must also consider the taste and preferences of the other foreign countries. You cannot assume that if we make the, cocoa bean, uh, the share beans stay here, and we produce the share butter in large quantity, foreigners will automatically buy it. You must factor in the foreign taste. That is how come not all foreign products get market in Ghana. Because if you don't factor in the taste and preferences, if you look at the law of demand, you must factor in that. So we must always, at every point in time, satisfy the local demand whilst exporting the export. Uh, I, I the, uh, understand the that. But being a lover of share butter myself, mm -hmm. And being someone who has had opportunity to travel a few times, yeah. I know that share butter from Ghana is in high demand. Yeah. It, is, it is a valuable product in a lot of countries around the world that I know of. Mm -hmm. And so I know that we have something that the world needs. And so maybe we should be prioritizing marketing our share butter better so that the women in the northern part of our country who produce share butter would have better exposure and the world would know that it's possible to get original raw share butter from us. So we keep producing here than exporting. But um, let's, let's move on from that. Um, yeah. I just needed to draw your attention because something that was told to me yes. directly so well um, by noted. the women. We will take care of but, that. But, but beyond, beyond that, you think you mentioned earlier that we were sharing, um, there was some sharing of um, bulbs. Yes. And you said you could prove it. Um, a video has just been provided. So I want to make sure that um, what you were saying is, uh -huh. is what we have. Have you seen that bulb? So that... We are sure that's what you were talking about. Yes. That's what you were talking about. Yes. Okay. Now, All before right. I, we go to the MCM, I wanted to clarify this. One of the constituents, yes, one of the constituents raised the issue of uh, Katarga Road, Swana, Yile, Dembala, and I think which one? Yes, Jisonail Market. And I want to use this opportunity to tell all listeners from Sanaru Consuelo and beyond, the Ghana Secondary City Support Program, now with your permission, this is from their own website. 
and the project ID is P164451, and the team leader was Catherine Lynch. And they gave approval to Ghana on 25th September 2018 with a total project cost of $261 million. The implementing agency is Ministry of Local Government, Decentralization, and Rural Development. And now, All right. I'm, I've just been told that it's raining and it's coming. And so we might have to wrap up our conversation. But okay, the former the MC, MC has not spoken at all. So if you would give him the opportunity to speak. I wanted to come back to the microphones, but we are told, you know, the rain is coming and we want to be able to end properly. So former MC, I will plead with you to be quick so that maybe we can, we can see if we can take a few comments before the rains come. Very well. All right. Let me stand on the existing protocol to thank you so much for actually this kind gesture. My regards to Portia, as I did mention already, we're together at AUSCC. She will hear. Yes. And Daniel Poku. Um, they have said it all. All that I have to say is that uh, the people of San Diego, ONDC, and for that matter, President Mahama, a lot of gratitude. I am saying this because it is NDC that recognizes the needs and the desire of the people. And for that matter, they gave out the district. It was being carved out of the Tamil Metropolis in 2012. And I happened to be the pioneer DCE. We are very grateful to NDC. For that matter, His Excellency President John Dramani Mahama. During the tenure and the leadership of His Excellency President John Dramani Mahama, as they have said it all, we were able to put together a district assembly office. Aside that, they have mentioned all the key areas. We are looking at agriculture, rural infrastructure, health, and education. Go around all the communities. You will see signs of what we have done in the area of educational infrastructure. Health centers, as you are aware, part of the district happen to be, part of the district have to be rural communities. And for that matter, accessing primary health care was a challenge. We're able to put a lot of chief centers in all these areas. Let's mention Sorogo, let's mention Tampikuko, let's mention Penjinga, and all other places. We have been able to do that. Let's find out whether during that, that is in a space of what? Less than four years. We did that. Let's find out whether for about eight years now, whether they have been able to do one for San Arbu, uh, constituency and for that matter, San Arbu district. Then again, like, like they did indicate, we picked the route from Tamasco Gate, about two kilometers, we tarried it, told the assembly, after we left office, not even an inch that they have added in the area of what? Of Tar Road. So as you, indicate, uh, you, you did indicate, uh, we are time constrained. And uh, we want to assure His Excellency President John Dramani Mahama and my younger brother Atayisa that we are not ungrateful people. The people of San Arugu, and for that matter, San Arugu constituency, are very grateful people. And come December 7, 2024, we shall show it for everybody to see. Thank you very much. All right. So, uh, we'll, yes, we'll just take final comments from both of you, gentlemen. Um, before we go, yes. Yeah, I also want to thank TV3 for this opportunity. Indeed, uh, Sanaro Constituency, as um, the early speakers has mentioned, has witnessed a lot of developmental projects in terms of uh, developmental projects, infrastructure, in terms of education. Uh, Indeed, uh, when you look at uh, from 2012 to 2016, the NDC parliamentary candidate and the DC then, in fact, engaged in a very vigorous educational infrastructural development. And as he has already mentioned, if you take the Nyangpala route, there are communities around that area that they provided uh, educational classroom block for community like Kulinjavula, 
Shishao, they pro we provided six classroom block for Shishao Islamic uh, Primary School. Kulinyavula Primary School, three classroom block. If you go to Kuchai, we, they provide three classroom block. You go to Tampio Kuku, they provide two classroom block for JSS. To start up the JSS, you go to Zayure, three classroom block. You go to Daman Kungyele, six classroom block and office unit. You come back to Jisonayele, three classroom block and computer lab. You go to Kwame, okay. three classroom block there, which was done through the able office of the parliamentary candidate, uh, the MP and the DC. Okay. So, in fact, the NDC indeed, through the able effort of Honorable A.B. Fuseni and the PC, has invested much in educational infrastructure All in right. the constituency. And right. so we like, to, we like to find out from the NPP, since 2017 till date, we want them to point out to us the, the, the educational infrastructure they are able to put yeah, or provide for the good people of Sanaro constituency. All right. Yes. And um, final you. words from you, sir. Um, it's on. Finally, what I want to see is that the previous speakers have already enumerated the achievement NDC have achieved over the years. Governance is not by lip service. It takes great minds and co commitment to govern. So I will take this opportunity to appeal to the people of Ghana to vote on 7 December for John Dramani Mama so that he will come and continue with the good work and reset Ghana for Ghana to work again. Thank you. All right. And un unfortunately, we have to say goodbye now. Um, I, I normally would have liked to take more comments from community members, but there, we have been told that it's raining and it's coming. So, so we have to say goodbye. Okay. So we want to thank you once again and to thank all the chiefs and the people that through the effort of their commitment to servicing this country in a better way, they have left their homes and they are here. In the midst of this uh, troubling weather, they are still standing here. We want to thank all of you. And to also now coin a new name for the MPP, Parliamentary Candidate and the MCE, Anytime you hear MPP parliamentary candidate name, mention run away. That's all I have to say. <laughs> all right. And on that note, we'll say thank you so much to all the members of this constituency in San Origo. Thank you so much um, for coming out to engage with us um, on Community Manifesto in this constituency. We're going to as many constituencies as we can before December 7th, and we're basically asking you to use your voice in the decision-making process going into the elections. Speak truth to power, speak to the issues, let your leaders know what your needs are and what your expectations are of them. We're still in Northern Ghana, we're going to more constituencies, so we just might come to your constituency soon. This has been election or community manifesto, I beg your pardon, on TV3 New Day. Stay tuned to the rest of our programs. Goodbye.